All right, so what I want to do is um, start, I'm, I'm Sheriff Jason Mikes with the Teller County Sheriff's Office. I'm going to give you a list of the evacs that are still under evacuation at this time. Um, our evacuation areas are still Cedar Mountain Road, north of Golden Bell, or north to Golden Bell, Wayward Wind, Snow Hill Road, Aspen Village, Broken Wheel, Beaver Lake Circle, Beaver Lake Place, Golden Bell Lane, Alpine View, Starview Trail, Beaver Lake Circle, um, our pre-vacs, I'm not going to list out, they're actually on our website. All that information is on the maps. Um, you can find that through the Teller County Sheriff's Office website, the Teller County Facebook page, and we'll send it to all the news stations so that they can push that out. The, here's the good news. Um, we do have 5% containment at this time. Here's why we're doing 5% containment. Our winds are already starting to come in and dry out the little bit of rain. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, we weren't supposed to have any rain um, last night, but uh, fortunately God has sent some uh, air tankers in, clouds, and they have dropped some rain this morning, so it did kind of slow things down a little bit. So uh, thankfully for that, we have that on the ground. The problem is the winds are starting to kick up, which is going to dry it out very quickly this afternoon. Um, so we are still looking at the fire issues, and then our winds are supposed to reach somewhere between 50 and 55 miles per hour. Um, and that's a sustained wind. So we're still in a high risk today. One of the biggest issues that we're dealing with right now is making sure that we put enough resources on this fire at this point, working with our state partners and all of our local agencies. So I'm gonna give you a list of the local agencies involved. Um, SoCo Fire, Black Forest Fire, Provo County Sheriff's and Strike Teams, Security Wildfield, Wide Field Fire, Cripple Creek Fire Department, Pikes Peak Regional IMT, Lake George Fire Protection District. Jefferson Como Fire Protection District, Northeast Teller County Fire Department, United States Forest Service, UPass Regional Health Services, Four Mile Fire Protection District, Divide Fire Protection District, Colorado Springs Fire Department, Colorado Division of Fire Prevention and Control, Colorado Division of Homeland Security Emergency Management. Um, all of those fire organizations are on scene and actively going after the fire. You will also see that we do have air that, are, that have done drops already. We do have hell attack that are staged and ready to go for point spot fires. Um, you're seeing a lot of hand crews. Last night our crews worked late in putting dozer line and then road grader lines through certain areas towards the head of the fire. We feel comfortable that we actually have um, the start of good containment, but really today because of the fire conditions, we're gonna be very aggressive. And I want everybody to know, um, this is the most aggressive I've seen during this time of the year. Um, fire conditions still, it's, it's colder outside. So we'll deal with those issues for our firefighters as well. Um, so just know we're doing everything possible to get this fire knocked down quickly and under control. It's still around that 98, so 90 to 98 um, acres. We do expect a little bit of growth today. Um, that, that's my expectations, right? So it could get bigger than that. We just don't know right now for sure. Um, so right now I feel pretty comfortable with where we're at with the amount of people that we have on the ground. That doesn't mean we're gonna release people to go back home because it, it, it's a dangerous fire and we're treating it as, as such. So until we can really get resources to give us a 100% containment, we don't wanna put anybody back in those areas. Um, we are gonna allow people to go back in and get medications here before long. So what we'll need you to do is contact the Teller County Sheriff's Department and give them a list to be able to be taken in to get your medications out. And those are for, for life-saving issues, major issues. If it's you need ibuprofen or you need something like that, we're not gonna take you back into the locations. But we do ask if you have major medicines or healthcare needs that we can get you in to do those things. Um, so contact the Sheriff's Office. Um, our animal rescue teams are still out. They're doing their jobs. Um, we do have locations opened up in Cripple Creek at the fairgrounds and at our cheat crest facilities and then certain other locations within the county. Our location for people to go to if you've been evacuated is still gonna be the Woodland Park Community Church. That's our shelter location. Um, and you have a great response team down there. So they're working hard at that. The, um, we still have 700 homes evacuated, 98 acres, um, food donations. We wanna say thank you to Walmart for the water and then the different donations that they brought us for the firefighters. Dawn of Hope and Solid Grounds Coffee from Woodland Park. Thank you for all that. I will tell you that um, Woodland Park Municipality is helping us with water if needs so as a backup. Um, we did get pretty low on water here locally last night because we put a lot of water on this fire. 
Your fire crews in this area are doing an amazing job. They were working until midnight last night in the dark um, to really protect those homes in those areas, and they've done a great job. So bear with us on that. Our investigation is ongoing. So I'm not gonna give you a lot of information about the investigation, because right now I do have investigators actually searching the area uh, and doing crime scene type things. So once I have more information on that, I'll be able to give it to you. So I'd like to turn it over to our commissioner and let him uh, speak with the rest of the commissioners so they can give you an update. And we want to add a lot just to simply say our priority is your life, health, and safety. So your commissioners left here late last night, uh, got here this morning at about six with our sheriff and first responders. We have toured the area uh, at Jason. It's, it's eye-watering what they're doing. So your homes right now are protected other than the one that we've lost. Fires come pretty close, but you've got brush trucks. And again, to reiterate, we just want to thank all of the adjacent jurisdictions. We have Congresswoman Pedersen's team here. We've got Dola on the phone. We talked to the governor again, and we've corresponded with his team. And thank you to the state. But most importantly, uh, you know, stay calm. Uh, try not to get frustrated. We did go to the shelter last night and talk to some of our citizens, and they were pretty calm. Everything from pets to medications to CPAP machines, as we always say, uh, but we'll do that today. So just have some patience try not to get frustrated again thank you so much we did have a couple of questions about the election there are no ballot boxes that are shut right now elections are continuing at a record rate so that's unaffected and with that eric or bob anything you'd like to answer yeah thank you dan uh, i'm eric stone commissioner from district three a um, couple of things want to thank city of woodland park again for their assistance with this they also are in the process of enacting an emergency fire ban of their own so that their restrictions will match the counties so that we can uh, ensure that all the resources that we have uh, are focused on the fire. Now about 15 minutes before we came on air just now, we got a notification of potentially an illegal burn going on on the north side of the county. We do not need resources to be pulled away from what we're doing right now. Our Sheriff's Department are helping people get back into their homes to get medications and to get things that they need out of their homes and are doing escort services. They're doing well checks, they're running roadblocks. We do not need to pull those resources away to go check on fires elsewhere. There is a complete fire ban on in Teller County right now. No open flames, no cigarettes outside. So we ask everybody to please, please to comply uh, with those fire bans because we need to focus on uh, the task at hand. That's all I have. Thank you. Bob Campbell, Teller County Commissioner. I don't have much to say other than I want to thank all the first responders, including the people in this room and Red Cross and each of the fire departments and the Sheriff's Department all the deputies, everybody assisted. And I want to thank all the citizens because I know what the hardship is to be evacuated. And I just appreciate everybody's patience. I know it is a significant hardship to be away from your home, where you keep your pets, your family and everything. So be patient because we need to be safe because the last thing we want to do is let people in and then have to re-evacuate them. So when it's time, we will let people back in and that's all I got to say. Thank you. So I would like to tell you that um, Pueblo County Sheriff David Lucero and then Sheriff out of El Paso County Joe Royball both sent teams to assist us. I just want to say thank you for that because we couldn't do these things without them and sending their crews so fast. Um, the other piece too is if people need to get information, here's where you can find information. The only real information you're going to receive is from the Teller County Sheriff's Office Facebook page, the Teller County Sheriff's Office website, the Teller County website um, and any of the news organizations that are here today um, or real news organizations. Please don't listen to a lot of our fake um, news information you're going to receive on YouTube or other locations where they're not actual media outlets. There's a lot of rumors flying around and really a lot of that is, is what we would call hogwash. So don't listen to those things. Look at your news channels for information and updates and what we send out through our tweets in our Facebook posts and, and on the county websites. And I think that will help clear up a lot of any miscommunication that's out there right now. Um, I wanna open it up to questions from our local media and then uh, we'll get started. Yes, sir. Sheriff, can okay, you just kind of brief us on the resources that you, you are throwing at this fire? How much in the way of manpower and personnel, equipment, air support, whatever the case may be, what have you got on right now? Yeah, so we had two seats coming, or uh, seats coming in this morning. They were doing airdrops on the head of the fire. Um, you had dozer teams that were here locally last night working until about midnight. We had road grader teams from the Teller County uh, Public Works out cutting line, also on roads, widening them, doing everything they could to create a better fire line. 
Um, you've got over a hundred and some personnel sitting out there. I couldn't tell you the exact because I'm not out there on the board, but I will tell you, you have a lot of resources. You have a lot of law enforcement resources secure in the area. Our search and rescue teams are stood up to do any more evacuations if need be. Um, we have enough resources to really fight this fire and probably another one. Um, but the biggest thing is really putting everything on this because we are worried about the turn in the weather. So Scott, that's what I can tell you is that we have a lot of resources. We do have tankers coming in on this fire. You've got Hell Attack that's sitting ready with two helicopters and that's all coming out of our state partnerships. Um, and that's, that's huge and that comes directly from the governor's office. Two planes now dropping water. Yeah. Yes, sir. And so you say you've also been doing dumps, so the, the planes of C-130s? No, I don't think there's C-130s out there. The seats are the smaller seats. dump aircraft. Yep. Okay, thanks. And then when you said that you this was the most aggressive fire you've seen for this time of the year, could you just go into a little more detail there about the characteristics? Well, a couple different types of aggression on this fire. One, the fire with the winds pressing it and with our dry conditions that we were receiving because of its uh, red flag type conditions. Uh, with low moisture contents, high grass, because we had a really wet spring and into summer and then into an early fall. Um, the grasses grew pretty high, so a fire can move very quickly through those dry grasses. Um, that's what makes it a very aggressive on its movements and then being driven by about a 35 to 50 mile an hour wind. Um, and it's in the center of a subdivision, right? Because Colorado's changing. Not all fires come from outside of subdivisions now towards an urban interface area or a subdivision interface. So really, you're having to deal with a fire immediately that's, that's now deal with structures and everything else. So it does have a, a, a very quick and aggressive approach. For us, putting people on the ground and putting in lines and structure protection and getting enough crews in quickly is really the key to success on these types of fires. Uh, and that's where those partnerships come into play because we use what's called mutual aid where we're bringing in agencies from surrounding us and then also our local agencies and everyone's putting all their effort right then into that fire. And it's almost like an automatic aid system. So that's why that aggressiveness from both sides of the fire and then also the response to the fire is happening. Is it primarily a grass fire then? No, Still? No. no, I mean, you're in a mountainous terrain, it hits trees. Um, I saw it, trees torch off last night. I mean, we, we had some pretty high flames being driven by that wind. Uh, it can get pretty nasty, which means that it'll spot way ahead of the fire. So we have crews watching for that as well. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how many people are evacuated? Um, I can't give you a direct number of people. I can tell you 700 residences. So, you know, if, if we average four people per residence for probably, I don't know, 2,800 residents or so, somewhere in there. Yes, sir. You can't go into the details of the investigation, but can you talk generally about what kind of charges this suspect might be facing? Um, everything from arson on a felony level. I, I mean, that's what I can tell you right now, because um, really I can't get into the investigation, but, but we are treating this as a, as a criminal act. Can you give us any details as to how the, the fire started or where? No, I can't. I wish I could, but until that investigation's over, I can't tell you anything. And you had mentioned how it kind of is at the center of a, a subdivision. Just talk to us about the efforts to save some of those structures. And correct me if I'm wrong, I believe there's only one home that's been lost at this point. What does that work been like being, the, being in the center of a subdivision? Well, and here's the thing. You have a rural fire department, right? This is where they live also. So you have firefighters that are fighting for their own subdivisions and homes. Um, when these things happen within that area, you have a, a very short amount of time before you lose homes or, or anything else as a fire starts to run. So that fire department, which, which response time was very quick, was able to get in and start to slow that fire down um, and keep it away from residents. So they immediately started structure protection um, to save homes. So, you know, it burns quickly through especially grass or duff and then into trees. So there's been a lot of mitigation over the years, but the problem is a fire with the wind driving it that fast, it's still gonna have an effect. When you say structure protection, well, that's where they're pulling away the duff and the debris from the, around the house. Uh, they're putting hand lines in so that they can stop the fire from getting to the residences. So that's, that's really what I'm talking about when I talk about structure protection. And that, and that may be other types of fire apparatus also. Sheriff, can you talk about, I know you can't say a lot about the investigation, but I'm wondering if you could talk about something that isn't quite clear to me is the relationship between the house that was burned and the fire, was it? The house caught fire first and the fire spread from there? Yes. Oh. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Is that house on 13 Beaver Lake Circle? I can't tell you that. Thank you. 
Um, what I can tell you is, is your fire departments are doing an amazing job with the state assets and everyone coming in. Um, they're just doing a fantastic job. I couldn't be more happy with everything and the response. And then also from all of our partnerships. So thank you all. We'll do another one of these um, probably around noon. Once I get the information back from them, the MMA aircraft to identify the, what, what, what we're seeing. Um, and hopefully I'll give you a, a better update then. So thank you all and have a great day and I hope to see you soon.